Total Wave is a, is a payment company. Uh, what we basically do is help merchants in Africa connect to the global economy, right? Um, some time ago, it, it was important. It was not possible for 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 someone in the U.S. to buy something from an e-commerce store in in Uganda, right? There's no payment gateway that could uh, power that process, and. What we did before when we wanted to do international transactions was use the likes of Western Union and PayPal and, and all of those things that took a lot of time and required a lot of processes. But at, but at the moment, we can do that. Um, people can buy from us, we can buy from anywhere in the world. If you use an iPhone with your hands, just signify if you're using an iPhone. <laughs> ah, all of you in the front are ah, awesome. Okay, so if you do that, or if you use some other services, you'll notice that there are some there are some services that you can access. You can access Spotify, you can't pay for Apple Music and, and all of those things. And the truth is, it keeps us away from what, what is happening in the international scene. What we are doing, what Flutterwave has done, on that end is to create virtual cards that you can, um, as you are, even as a Ugandan citizen, you can own a dollar card and you can use it to make purchases in the international uh, marketplace. So that is one other way we are trying to connect Africa to the global economy. So you can, uh, if you wanted to buy something with your uh, bank card or your ATM card and it didn't work and maybe they placed some kind of restriction because of your location or because of your country, what you can do is go on um, on Bata. Bata is a product by Flutterwave. Create a virtual card, put in money on your virtual card, and, and use it to shop anywhere in the world, right? So that's um, something that we are also doing for for the African um, marketplace to connect us to the global economy. So these three things were kind of like part of what made me, what got me to where I was the other time. The SEO made sure that I saw the, the ad on Instagram, and then I clicked and I followed it. And then the UI design it was nice. I was happy with the product even before I saw them. And then I looked at the product and like, wow, this would look good on me, right? So this is usually where they pay all the most attention to get um, customers to come to their site. But the, the more important uh, things are the conversion rate and the SCA rate. The conversion rate is how many people who actually um, carried out a transaction on your site. Like it's not just about them visiting and looking through the product and doing all of that, but how many actually bought the product. So if you have a high conversion rate, it means you're making more money, right? And the SCA rate is the shopping cart abandonment rate. That is what I did, right? I abandoned the product in the shopping cart and then I went away because I didn't trust the merchant. And there's 69.2% SCA rate at the moment. So what that means is for every 100 persons that opens a, a, an e-commerce website to buy products, chances are, not actually chances because it happens, 69 of them will leave their products in the shopping cart and go away. You know what usually the problem is? Because there's no trust, right? Like what happened to me probably happens to a lot of other people. And that is because you usually don't get to think so much about what you're doing or what you're buying or how you use it until you get to the point where security becomes an issue, where you make payment. Well, I don't know who this person is. I don't know who's processing the payment for them. I don't know if my card is safe with them. They don't feel secure. And that is when they go, they leave the, the products in the, in the shopping cart and then they, they, they leave your site. And probably they go where? They go to Amazon or to Jumia or to all those popular ones who we all know are safe and that they've been operating for a long time and there hasn't been any issues. So there's no trust, right? And that is usually uh, a very big problem. So the solution could be or would be to um, put practices in, pr in place put solutions in place that would make them trust you, right? The first thing would be to personalize your checkout experience. And that means um, a usual checkout page just has a form asking for your card details, probably your name, your, your security pins, and all of that. That is what a, a usual checkout page looks like. You put in your card details, you click pay, and your money is gone. So, what if you go 
an extra mile and kind of try to personalize that experience. Put on your, your, your company's banner on it, put uh, a title, put security measures in place. If you have PCI compliance, you put a badge there. If, you, if, you, you, if you're using dollars to charge on your e-commerce page, don't come to your checkout page and change and do the conversion for them, right? Maintain that currency consistency. If you have all these things put in place to not scare your customers, then there's lower chances that they will abandon the, the product and run away. So try using your security badges if you have one. Before you process any transaction, you should have a security clearance for that. So if you have all those badges, put them on your checkout page. If you have um, one more thing is to not ask for more information that, that, is, that is necessary for that transaction. So if you want someone, to, if someone is buying maybe a school bag from your site, all you need from them is the card details that you are paying with or if they are paying with M-Pesa, you need uh, whatever information that M-Pesa requires to make payments, you, you give it out to them, right? So it doesn't make sense that I want to buy a bag from your shop and you're asking me for my full name and for my last name and for my home address and for my mother's maiden name and, and all of that, right? I'm not going to give you that. So once I start seeing all those questions, then I start thinking that maybe something is not right. Right? And once I start having second thoughts, there's chances that I'm not going to complete that transaction. So if you want maybe the address for delivery purposes and, and all of that, then you ask for that details before you get to the checkout page. The checkout page is usually where the customers get scared. So um, these processes will help you build trust and at uh, the end, along the way, I'm going to show you how Flutterwave helps you make that possible. And this is the contents that I'm going to talk about today. These are basically three ways that the Flutterwave checkout system helps you build all those um, trustworthy processes that makes customers stay on your site and complete your transactions. Um, we made the payment options customizable. We made all the display information customizable and also the payment links. The payment options are usually, like I said, it, it's, it needs to be consistent and your currencies need to be consistent and you need to know that you want them to pay you with the bank transfers, with card transfers, uh, with barter, with mobile money, and pesa all of that. We give you the ability to select all the options that you want to get paid in and it's up to you to decide how many of those options you will enable. Secondly, the display information. Like I said, it's always okay to personalize your checkout pages. It, it, it gives the customer this confidence that this is the person that is charging me this money, this is the person I'm paying this money to. This, if you put on your logo on your checkout page, it, it gives kind of, the, it becomes more personal and they, they know that this thing belongs to you. And also the payment links, um, we'll get that. This is also one fantastic way that merchants can receive payments using Flutterwave. And there are a lot of customization options there as well. So checkout systems basically make it possible for customers to complete transactions without any assistance. And what that means is, if your checkout page isn't, um, isn't understandable enough for a customer to come there and make payments and go without needing your assistance or without needing to read your documentation or anything like that, then it's not a good one. A good checkout system should be easy to understand and every single person that comes on there should be able to make payment. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're running an e-commerce site, the most important thing for you is to make sales, right? So if at the, if at the point where you get to make sales, you scare your customer away, then you're, something is definitely wrong. So um, in that regard, we've made a lot of different ways for you to customize them, customize it, and like I said, the payment options, the display information and the payment links. Um, let's let's look at them in detail. If you want to customize payment options, there are two ways you can go about it. If you have, um, if you if your if your e-commerce site is running on Flutter with payment system, um, we have the. Okay, so the two ways are. We have the dashboard context, and we also have the integration context. 
usually the dashboard context is kind of better, uh, it's the default, right? No, the integration is the default, but if you want to, if you want to have multiple instances of your checkout systems on different places, on, your, on different parts of your website, you use the integration context because it gives you the, the ability to define as many uh, payment options as you want. Like you can, you can have on your first page, maybe on the landing page of your website, you want someone to have a different checkout system there that has different payment options. Like maybe on that first page, you only want to accept payments with M-Pesa, right? You can do that. Then on the second page, maybe on the product page, you want to enable that person to pay with bank transfer, pay with M-Pesa, pay with card, and other options. You can do all of that using the integration context. That is if you're writing the code for it. Then if you're using the dashboard context, if I'm speaking too fast, just let me know so I can slow down. If you're using the dashboard context, it, it's kind of easier to implement because all you need to do is to log into your Riv account and go to the payment options and select the, the options you want to enable. But the, the, down, the downside to it is that it's not flexible enough to allow you to have different instances of your checkout systems in different parts of your, of your, pay, of your application. So if you use the dashboard context, it means you can only use the payment options you've selected on the dashboard. Right, you can't you can't change it. Yes, yeah, so that's basically what I just explained. So this is the dashboard. I it's kind of tiny. You will not see it, but this is all the payment options that that are available on Rave. Not all of them, but most of them. So you can just come here as a merchant. You want to specify that this is how you want to get paid when people are buying stuff from your site. You check the card payments, bank payments, barter payments, mobile money, QR code, and, and all of that. So that is how the dashboard payment system works. Yeah, like I said, it's not, it, it has limited uh, flexibility because you can't change it. Um, you can't have multiple payment option checkout systems in different places on the website. You can only have one instance, and that one instance will have the payment options that you've selected on your dashboard. And then, I talked about the integration context. So when you're writing, um, as a developer, when you want to integrate Rave Payments its way into a web, web app, you usually use the inline JavaScript function that we, that we have, and it gives you a, a range of properties that you define values for. And one of them is the payment options. The payment options property takes, uh, it's kind of like an array that takes, you define, um, you define all the, the payment options that you want to be available for that particular payment system, for that particular checkout page, right? If you want to have mobile money there, or you want to have, so if you want to have mobile money there, or you want to have card, you want to have bank transfers and all of that, you can you can specify them in the payment options uh, property and use the values for that property will be all the payment options that you want to be available. So say for instance, I, I want to, like I explained in the first time, in the first page of your application, you only want to have um, M-Pesa as the payment option that should be available there. What you have to do with this is the integration context, you define the property and the value should only be in PESA, right? And you know that no matter where you call that, that checkout page, that will be the only payment option that is available. And then if you want to have more in different places, you can define as many of them as you want. So you can also switch between contexts if you decide that at some point you don't want to be using the integration context anymore, you only want to use the dashboard context, all you need to do is log into your Log into your merchant account on Rave and switch it from, and just enable the payment. Enable the dashboard context payment. It's it's really easy. So it's at you are not tied to a particular payment um, option or context at any time. If you're done with integration context and you feel like you know what I don't want that much flexibility, I can do with just a set of payment options. You can decide to do that. 
And this is how it works. You just go to your dashboard and enable dashboard payment options. Once the, the box is checked, then the dashboard payment context is what will apply everywhere on your on your payments page on your application page. And we have the display information as well. Like I said, it's customizable. You can decide what you choose to show your users when they come to your site or when they come to your checkout page. And one important thing is if you intend to personalize your checkout page where um, where customers get to pay you from you will need to add information about yourself that will make them feel comfortable and confident that okay i'm not um these guys are not fraudulent these guys are not thieves and all of that so this is this um, this is how photo helps you do that you can upload your logo you can upload your logo you can define um titles for all of your for every single for okay, the the title will be something like say something that is definitive or that is descriptive that can tell that customer that hey, it is Flutter that is charging you for this um, product that you want to pay for, or is Flutter that is processing this payment, or the name of the company that is selling, probably your client's um, startup, the name of the business. You put it there as the custom title and. That customer knows that this is the person that I'm paying to, and they feel more comfortable with it, buying from you. Also, yeah, the logo you can also put a logo. So these things are not usually available on default checkout pages around the world. These things are just um, things we think will make the customer a little bit uh, feel trust trustworthy about your company or about your checkout page, actually. So you can put your logo, you can put your custom description, you can do all of that. And, and then even the pay button as well. So sometimes you see, um, you see people get to uh, the checkout page and you see a list of all you've ordered and the, the price and everything and you just see pay or pay now or... So the, the, the ideal thing here is you can write what you think makes the customer comfortable. If you're giving out a coupon or if you're giving out a promo code, you can put it on your pay button and say, pay uh, a thousand shillings at 50% discount or something and put all that text on the payment button so the customer knows exactly how more likely if they, they have that, um, that willingness, you want to make them pay because at the end of the day, that is your goal. You want to make sales and the only way you make sales is if they, if they get to pay. So you write whatever makes you feel that your customers are going to click this button. We give you that opportunity to customize the button to put whatever you want there, and at the end of the day, um, get your customers to to pay. So we also have the customizable payment links. So this is one uh, one way that Flutterwave helps merchants receive payments everywhere, anytime, and this is kind of not so popular because it's really easy. You don't need to write code to use a payment link. So let's say for instance, sorry, what's your name? Timothy? Okay, so let's say for instance, Timothy opened uh, a business today. He wants to sell to all of us here and we are all willing to buy. We're just looking for ways to pay him. What Timothy can do is sign up on Rave, go to his Rave account, get a link, there's always a link on every merchant account on Rave. You get that link and you, and you see what, everyone here visit this link, you can pay me from there. What happens is I click that link, it takes me to a page where I make payments, I put in the, my card or I use an Ibesa or mobile money, put how much I want to pay to you and click send and you get the money. Right, so that is how it works. You don't need to, to write a lot of code for that. You don't need to integrate a lot of stuff. You just need to have a payment link and you can have it anytime, any day you want. So even at that, we also give you that, um, that ability to customize the payment link, to make it look more attractive for your customers or to just make sure that at the end of the day, they have reasons to buy from you. So these are the 
uh, customizable information you have on the on the payment link, the amount you can set it to what you want to. Maybe uh, Timothy wants us to pay him five thousand shillings each, so you can set the amount you want, the currencies that are allowed. So maybe you don't want someone from from Ghana paying you in cities. Then you just want shillings and maybe naira or just one dollars. You can also set the allowed currencies. You can check the payment options as well. The charge cycle, you you would want to probably say, okay, this is a one-time payment, or I want you to charge this person every year, every month, or every year. It's, you can set that option as well. And then the custom title, the custom description, all those things we talked about. Then there's also a custom link and the redirect link. The redirect URL, URL is usually what you show um, customers when they've completed the payment. Say for instance, I visited that Timothy's link and I paid and the payment is successful. By default, Flutter will, will give you uh, a success page and then you'll get a receipt for the payment. But if you would like, if you are a startup and you would like to take that, um, usually what they do is, the trick is when you complete a payment or when you complete uh, a purchase, they take you back to the product page just in case you want to buy more, right? So it's a trick that e-commerce owners use to uh, to make you buy more things from them. So if I if I bought a hat and I complete the payment, they will redirect me to a page that has a lot more hats, finer hats, better than the one I bought, hoping that I'll buy more. So you, we also give you that functionality. You can redirect them to wherever you want on your website, and and all of that. So. Um, I'm not sure you can see this. It was looking really good in my laptop. Now it, it doesn't look so good. But this is a typical payment um, checkout page. This is what it looks like. You see the payment details, put in your card information, and all of that. Now this, first, first of all, this doesn't tell me who I'm paying the money to, right? It doesn't tell me which payment processing company will process the transaction. And I, I don't know if this is secured. It's asking me for for too many information, right? If you just need me to pay for something I'm buying from you, I shouldn't have to write all of this. Personally, I don't like filling so much forms. So I, don't, I want to put my card and my pin and pay. So this is what we're trying to solve. So um, to give customers a lot more confidence and a lot more information to make them choose to pay. So this is what Flutterwave's payment gateway looks like. You see, the, you see the company, you see their name, you see the amount you're paying, you see their logo there, you see what you're paying, and the only thing you require to put in is your card number, the expiration date, and the PIN. Right? So if, if you were buying a product and you met those two checkout, page, uh, those two checkout pages, which one would you be likely to pay to? Right? If you were me, I would pay here. At least I know if I don't get my money, I would look for positive energy company and tell them, hey, I paid you guys. If they said uh, they, they didn't get the transaction, I would look for Flutterwave below. See, powered by Flutterwave, PCI, DSS, DSS compliant. So you have a lot of, you have the security badge, you have the company's name, you have all the information you need to know that these people are not fraudulent and they are not trying to run away from you with your money. Also, when you set, um, when you set, the payment options, this is how it comes up when the when the person wants to pay. You see, you can pay with card, pay with m -Pesa, pay with bank, pay with QR code, and all of that. So we also give you that uh, flexibility to decide how you want to pay that customer. So I might not have money in my card at the time, but I might have money in m -Pesa, so I'll, I'll choose m -Pesa and then I'll complete the transaction. Um, there's something else I wanted to talk to you guys about. There's something we have called the Flutterwave Developer Network. Um, before I get there, let me just say that as at last year, the, the Flutterwave checkout page processes about 300,000 transactions per day. Right? So people are using it, people are adopting it because it's really easy and it's really simple. And we're trying to build uh, a community around, around our product. And this is how we want to start. We, have, we want to have a developer network that will give you um, access to support from a Flutter with engineering team. So, uh, sorry, what's your name? Kenneth. Kenneth. So just about a few minutes ago, Kenneth was telling me that um, he, there's something he wanted to do with Flutter with, and he wanted to know if we have a, some kind of amount limits, amount restrictions, right? 
and, and I told him what to do about it. So if you want, right now, he was able to do that because I'm here. But if you want to have this kind of support from the Flutter Wave engineering team, you want to have someone you can reach out to anytime you want to, maybe you want to integrate payment for a client, or maybe you want to open up your own business and you want to collect payment from anywhere in the world. If you're on this network, you get access to somebody like me in Flutterweave or any other engineering person and you get to ask them to put you through. Okay? So this is not, um, it's not public yet. Of course, you can't have a company that is processing everybody's transaction and you're giving the entire, um, uh, the, the whole world access to your engineering team. That is not productive, right? So, but if you're on this Flutterweave developer network, you can reach out to any one of us anytime, ask us questions, get clarifications. We have dedicated programming um, language support. So if, if for instance, you're, you're working on, on Python and you're trying to maybe build some, something and it's not working, you have a, a dedicated Python engineer in Flutterwave who will put you through. First hand access to private products. So every day we are building stuff and we have a bunch of announcements that are, that are coming up and when companies like, like Flutter we've built stuff, we want the de developers to, to see it first, to test it first, play around with it first, use the API, see how it works, and that is a privilege. I think the only company that has done that for me before, I can't remember their name, but back in 2017, I was part of a private preview for a company's product, and the product is live now, but I felt really good that I was one of the first people to actually test it and see that it works. So being on this network also helps you, uh, also gives you that privilege uh, for Flutterwave. You get access to the Flutterwave Advocate, which I'm one of, and we have hackathons across regions and universities. So Flutterwave is looking to expand. I know we have an office here in this building on the sixth floor. Um, yeah, so we're trying to get into schools. There's something we've been doing in, in Nigeria for a while. We have um, what we call the Flutterwave developer hackathons in, in, in the share institutions. And um, the last one, we give out a, a cash prize of about $1,500 to the team that won. And a lot of other fancy uh, prizes, you get to come use our workspace, you, you get to interact with our engineers. If you have, if you want an internship, you can, you have the opportunity to request for it and all of that. So being part of the network also uh, gives you that opportunity. It's not uh, open to everybody. And then we have job fairs. Job fairs is one of the community programs that we do to help developers in the community get jobs. Um, sometimes it's easier when you're in school and you have support from your parents or from your family members and all of that. But when you get out, getting a job to go work for nice companies like Andela and the rest can be tasking, right? So what we do is we bring all these companies together in, in, in a big room like this and then we bring you guys who want to get hired and we kind of breach the gap, right? The companies are there waiting for you. The last time, the last one we did was last month, or maybe two months ago, and we had about 20, 30 something companies in attendance. We had over 300 um, developers, and some co hired on the spot. So, so we just breached the gap between you and submitting CVs and waiting for interviews and all of that. We bring those companies to you, and they interview you, and they hire you if you're a good fit. So that's also, um, informations like this will also be spreading it across the Flutterweb Developer Network. So if you want to be on it, um, just visit that, that link, it's bit.ly, then forward slash FDN. If you do that and submit your details, we'll put you on the network, and if we have any more informations like this, we'll share it with you. So, um, finally I'd like to say, that I like. I like your country. I, this is my first time in Uganda, so I like the weather at least. It feels cool here. It's too hot in Nigeria. Thank you very much for having me. This, um, if you have any questions or if you want to ask me something, I still, I'll be here for the next 20 minutes outside there. And if you, if you want to ask me anything before I leave, you can come over there and we can chat for